Hello and welcome. Hey, it's on me right well, now. He hello, Here, Tony. Hello, hello and welcome to the next report. I'm going to be doing the entire thing. No, oh, oh. That would have been awesome, been though. Silly. Yeah, I know. You had like a neck problem it, the entire time. Yeah, just yeah. I would have been. It would have been bad. Welcome to the next report. We are back from PAX. We yeah. are here. And uh, we've got Craig Turner hey, here hey. to my left. We're going to be getting to you, Craig, in just a second. Sure. We've got some updates. We've got a couple things to cover. Frost, how are you doing, man? Hey, I'm great. Uh, so on this, it says, keep it short and sweet, Frost, for once. I'm going to do it. That's my banter report. Thanks, everybody. I don't even know Frost, what this do up here. here. What? Oh. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. That's amazing. Today we've got a lot to cover. We've got some uh, very important Wildstar updates right at the top that we're going to cover. Uh, we've got some community news, and then we've got Jeff Kurtnacker joining us. He is the lead composer. Going to be talking about the music of Wildstar. Music is my favorite thing, so I'm very excited for today. Why, why are you making this face at me? Is it your favorite thing? It is. One, yeah, music is my favorite thing. He's still basking in the glow of keeping it short and sweet, so oh, okay. he's drawing it out longer. Yeah, yeah I got it through his expressions. I'm just oh, kidding. I appreciate that. Yeah, oh, no, okay. that's great, man. Gamescom codes. We've been waiting for them for a long time. We will be giving them out on next week's stream, so make sure to tune in for that. Don't leave this stream. Don't leave this stream, because there's still a lot of important information coming. But Gamescom codes, we will be giving them out through the next support next week, Tuesday, 11 a.m. right here. Huh? How about that? Seven, almost seven exact days from right now. In fact, it is seven days from right now. Oh, uh, but Not even almost, almost exact. No. Almost exact because we're like three. So you're gonna do it at 11 a.m. PDT. As soon as we go live, I'm just shouting out a code. <laughs> I'm just gonna give out a code. Uh, we can't, we were in PAX also. Uh, that is, we want to give some updates on that. You had you did a panel. I uh, did. Correct? I was on the MMORPG uh, panel, which was great. Had a lot of fun. Uh, had some some pretty big names in the MMO industry, so I was really honored to be a part of that. Did that include you? It included me. That's okay. the weird With thing. With the big names. Oh no no no. That's my that's what I was going to get to. Thank you for trolling me right there, Craig. Uh, what I was going to say is I was surprised <laughs> that they even I like had me you included can on that. All the time. But you know, no, it's it's fine. I was going to be humble. It was going to be great. You were humble. I was going to be humble. I was going to say like you know it was great to be part Today of that. Today is a day of firsts. Uh, well, good, man. I'm glad you had a great time. Uh, yeah. We had a great time as well at the community event. Uh, there were a lot of people that showed up for that community event. Unfortunately, right at the beginning, we had to turn away like 80 people because uh, we were at max capacity. But they if wouldn't you came even, back... No joke, they would not let me in. They literally wouldn't. They wouldn't let him in until a fan came up to you, asked you for an autograph, and the security guard was like, Oh, maybe I should let this guy but in. But even after that, they didn't. Like they I, really didn't. I went down and I was hanging out right next to where everybody else was. So it's just too hey, you perfect. Know it's it's fine. You Sorry, know, you're not getting in without coops. <clears throat> yeah, not without coops. No, not without coops. But you know what? Here's the thing. I still talked with a lot of people. We still hung out. Even if if it was at max, we were still hanging out with people outside yeah. of the bar. So it was great. It was there fun. was a spillover area. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of community was there. We actually had a community cosplay contest, and it turned out amazing. The winner took home five hundred dollars cash. Uh, at second place, 100. Third place, 50. And there is the picture of the Wildstar cosplay. Great job. Actually, the way they're lined up, all the way to the left, or if you're looking at your screen, all the way to the right of the picture uh, is uh, third place, then first place, and then uh, second place there, the Orin. $500 uh, at PAX is awesome. There's lots of cool stuff to buy up there. Yeah, dude. At what, it, was a, it was a great, yeah. He was throwing money. He didn't buy me a drink, though. Like so that. that's Weren't we buying the drinks? No, yeah, we bought some drinks. We bought it. Everyone got some drinks and some food. It was a great time. Uh, there's some community news here. Uh, Twitch.tv slash uh, Neuralight is holding a Wildstar Challenge Week. He's going to be doing 50 hours of Wildstar streaming uh, for the next five days, and he wants the, ch the community to go in and challenge him. There's going to be some uh, audience participation. So go check him out. Give him a follow on Twitch.tv slash Neuralight, N E R. A L Y T E, perfect. So that is our uh, Wildstar updates. Now, Kung, you were here for a very important yeah. Wildstar live updates from uh, Craig Turner. Wow, wow, Cougar DC. Thank you for that, gentlemen. Yeah, that was good. All right, so uh, lots of stuff today. It's it, it is the big one. Uh, we're we're finally ready to talk to you guys about the server technology, the dwindling populations. You know, Frost had mentioned last week on Twitter that we've got some new technology in the works. Uh, I think the community surmised that me being on here today without having an update, probably we talk about it. Um, the first thing really is 
I and, and the other developers here at Carbine want to apologize for our silence on the issue. Um, we got it. We didn't get caught unexpected, but we did have an unexpected technological breakthrough that we wanted to see to fruition before we decided to talk further about it because the one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to say soon too often and we don't want to give you guys promises that we can't then fulfill, which unfortunately had the unintended side effects that we had to be really, really quiet about the server population stuff. So what does all this mean? It means that we're going to be bringing mega servers, our version of mega servers to Wildstar. So we've got a post up on the forums already. Uh, the community team worked on with myself that we, we did as a, as a shadow post. Um, we're going to have some more details as time goes by, but just to give you a brief overview of what that means for Wildstar, is we're going to go down to two mega realms per data center, a PVE rule set and a PVP rule set per data center. So there'll be four realms overall. And this is all because of the technology that we had that basically took our already really large player caps and just blew out the top. We have the ability to put lots and lots and lots of players on a single realm now. And so given the fact that we had, we do need to merge servers, that that's, everybody's very aware of that. It's, it's sort of the, the normal thing that happens post launch of a, new wild, uh, of a new MMO, where we have that sort of high play time, everybody's doing six hours, the six hour play time's reduced down to two hours, overall concurrency starts to drop. We knew we were probably going to have to do some sort of consolidation, but we decided that when this technology came online, uh, the breakthrough not too long ago, we're like, well, let's just go all in. Let, let's do what we kind of always wished we had the time and tech to do, which was provide just this huge amount of critical mass of players to be able to play all in the same realm, uh, all together to be able to do the raids, the dungeons, the open world, whatever, whatever suits your, your, your fancy. We wanted to be able to provide that to our players. So we're not going to turn this on today. We're not. We're still. We've made it so that the technology works. We've tested it. We know it's going to work. We now have to do all the little odds and ends that bring it all together and enable you guys to be able to play on these mega servers. But the one thing that we're going to do, the one thing that we're providing relief for you all today, is we've enabled free realm transfers on every single realm, not to every other realm, but we're trying to basically give everybody the option to consolidate on four realms roughly per data center in order to allow you guys to self-congregate and to not wait for the mega servers and to improve your own behaviors better. Uh, not behaviors, the playability. Like if you know that, oh, I, want, I, just, I just want that merge. Why wait for another three to six weeks for us to roll out the mega servers? Let's go ahead and put those free transfers out now. Uh, allow you guys to move if you want to move or not. One of the things that we're going to do with the mega servers, it's actually going to move all of your guild information, all of the auction house, community exchange, everything like that is going to move with the mega server uh, downtime and when we actually push that out. Whereas if you do the free transfers now, your guilds won't. So you may want to talk to your communities and figure out, do we leave a guild leader on an, uh, on an alt and transfer in the meantime so that we don't lose progression? Do we start now? Things like that you'll have to, to work on in the interim, but we figured that Allowing and giving you guys the option for the free transfers in the meantime, now that we're starting to talk about it, is the best way for everybody to have a good time. Not only in the long term, long term when we do the mega servers, and in the short term, so that we're not having to wait. Uh, also, we turned off paid realm transfers. Uh, we did that at 9 a.m. this morning. The announcement hit at 11 with the live stream. The reasoning behind the paid transfers is we weren't. Everything changed. We're now talking about mega servers. We didn't want to charge anybody to do the, the moves. So we do have free transfers in place. We do have mega servers. There's lots, well, mega servers are coming. There's lots of more details and things that we need to talk about with you all, uh, with the community. We're going to roll things over out in the next couple weeks as we finalize this stuff. We've got to put it into QA. We need to figure out how we're going to test you know, this potentially unbound, but it's not actually unbound, but unbound number of people playing on the realms. Uh, in a live environment. We're going to have long downtime so that we're going to have to do uh, 12 to 36 hours of downtime whenever we roll this out. We'll have more talks about that later. Uh, one of the things we are going to do, which is kind of a cool thing with the mega servers, is one of the obvious bits is name conflicts. So when we were doing this, one of those sort of edge case, so an example of the edge case that we have to work through, is we decided to add surnames to the game. So we're going to allow everybody to have uh, force everybody to have a first name and a last name. And that'll pretty much blow out any name conflicts that we might have. So instead of having Cougar, 
and a hashtag and a number or a cougar in the realm that I came from, you, you will actually have the ability to name your character first name and last names. So last names will be mandatory at, in the era of Wildstar and the mega servers, but I think that that's something that I know our systems designers wanted to do before launch, but we couldn't do. It was out of scope. But we're now taking the chance to do this and do it right for the mega servers. So this is something that one of the examples of the things that we're working through in this you know, three to six week period before the mega service comes online that we have to make sure that we get right and squared away for everybody. Uh, things like actually merging the auction houses and stuff of that nature. We've got a FAQ that the community team has been working on that's up either on the knowledge base or the forums. I expect if you go linkage in that front, you'll be able to find the FAQ. And I think that's sort of the gist of it. I know that there's a lot more flowery language in the forum post, so make sure to check out the forum post. Make sure to stand by with, you know, watch community feeds, watch mine. We're, we're going to start being a lot more talkative about this subject now that we've actually been able to go out and, and say this is what we're doing. It was really important to us that we did communicate with you guys, and I know Frost, myself, the other developers here at Carbine were sad that we chose silence but we had to choose silence at the time because we weren't sure if this technology would work and if this is what we were going to do. But we've now committed internally and now we're committing externally that we're going to go down the route of mega servers. And now that we've made that commitment, we're going to execute on it and it falls into my department and everybody else to be able to, to execute on that vision for the game. So we will start talking about this. I'm sorry that it's been so long. We were definitely were not blind about it. We knew it was going on. Um, and, and I think overall, we all believe this is the right long-term benefit for Wildstar, that having all of our players congregating on these mega servers is just going to provide the best experience for anybody in the game. Like, it, the, the raids and open world, just, it'll be a great experience for everybody. So, um, while it'll be controversial to some point, and, you know, for those that aren't as excited as we are about it, you know, my apologies for that, but we're all really, really excited internally. We had lots of people coming by, you know, various people and say, oh, I want to know about the mega servers, I want to know about the mega servers. So now you all know about the mega servers, more information to come, and I should probably let you guys get on to the real star of the show, Mr. Kurt Necker, but I think there's going to be a break and the, yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, and, uh, yeah, so just a, just a quick recap that we're doing the mega servers, we're, right now we have uh, free realm transfers, yep. and, and there will be surnames in the game. Yeah, surnames with the mega servers, but the free realm transfers are now, there's specific destinations, so mm -hmm. while it's not every every realm into every realm, mm -hmm. we're basically trying to f uh, push it to specific realms. Okay. We were limited in technology, we could only put one realm into four as far as the free realm mappings, so we sort of congregated things around those four realms right. within like uh, rule sets, so PvP, PvE only going to PvE, PvP only going to PvP. Right. Documentation will be up on the forums or the website for the specifics of that. I don't mm. think we need to go into crazy artwork on the live stream for what realms are the, yeah. the targets yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah. now. But uh, Oh, it will be a brand new realm, so we're not going to do, it won't be Avatis or it won't be Hazic that is the new mega, the mega servers. They will be brand new realms that we'll have to talk more about later. Awesome. Uh, if you have any more questions about that, there's a full detailed forum post that will link out to everything. So go on to our forums, uh, our, our main forums for Wildstar, and you'll be able to pull all the links from there. Uh, again, thank you so much for thank coming on. And before we actually go through with the mega server thing, and before that comes <laughs> online, uh, you, we'll be having uh, Cougar back to have a full hour-long Q&A session. Uh, today, obviously, busy man, you got to run, but uh, he will be back. Uh, for a big live stream, big Q and A. So if you have your questions, we will be able to get them in before this, uh, yeah. before the mega server. So mega servers are coming. They're not going to be for a little bit time yet. We don't have every single last bit of detail worked out, but we'll have lots to talk about in the coming weeks. So again, my apologies, but I'm so excited. I love big yeah. projects, big operational projects, but I think this is absolutely the right direction for Wildstar. And I want it, I want it, I want it. <laughs> we want it too. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, you. If you have questions for Jeff Curtinacker, we're going to be getting into the music of Wildstar. So go ahead and start typing your questions for Jeff in the Twitch chat, and we'll start pulling them. As soon as we come back, Jeff will be here, and we'll be talking about the music of Wildstar. Ross is going to sing. It's going to be great. Nope, never <laughs> happened. We'll be right back. T for teen. Damn right. Welcome to Wildstar. This is DevSpeak. This disclaimer will self-destruct.
No. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Guess what? Guess what? It's time for player versus player. I'm so excited. We're dropping a bomb on your face. That bomb is sabotage, AKA drop two, AKA dagger stone pass. A 15 versus 15 battleground with mounts. <laughs> Boom. Here's the sitch. You have a base. Your enemy has a base. Protect your fusion core, destroy their fusion core. Win! Capture and hold uplinks throughout the map to call in periodic airstrikes on the enemy's core. Sounds simple, right? But you forgot my favorite part, bombs! Now what they tell me you're supposed to do is grab a bomb, take it to the enemy base, and use it on their fusion core. But what do I like to do? Full sabotage. Enemies protecting their uplink? I'm gonna stroll up in here and drop a little ticking time bomb. Sabotage. Oops, I just killed you. Why don't I take that bomb off your hands and drop it on your base? Sabotage. Oh, did you guys want this extra bomb? Only two seconds left, but it's a sabotage. Hey, friendly teammates. We should stick together. Oh no, sabotage. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Whoa, uh, get away, get away. Sabotage. Let us know what you think. The devs are listening. And we are back with lead composer for Wildstar, Jeff Kurtenacker. Hey guys. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. It's great to be here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm big fans. I don't know if you know that. Yo, I watch the show every week. Hey, look, I don't, I don't want to get into a, it's a, pleasure a, to be a here. big hug fest on the show here, but Jeff is one of my favorite people at this company. Oh, Stop, because Jeff and? is one of my favorite people at this well, company. He's this only is great. been here for what, uh, two weeks? So who cares? <laughs> but, uh, but I also, mm, here's the thing though. Are we going to have a hug fest? Nope. Oh, here's here's oh, the thing oh. his music is so freaking good, and he gives oh, a damn about every single area in the game, and, and actually just went above and beyond to make sure that these areas had their own theme and there's a lot of games that'll just reuse stuff all the time. It's a big deal reusing. Not here. No, you're no I appreciate it. There's like nine hours of, of music, I believe. There's a have. lot of it, yes. There's a lot. I and find so. that Jeff has a hard time taking compliments. I try and say, Jeff, I love you. You're a great guy. Yeah, but you never say uh, you never uh, say it uh, like that. Uh, okay. You always throw in a bunch of like F bombs in the middle of it and make me feel weird. That's not true. <laughs> what? That's not true. I uh It's kinda true. Okay. All right, so let's get, what are you doing? Why are you <laughs> sliding up on me? All right, just stay on your side of the table. All right. We're gonna have uh, blinders here. Uh, so give us a little bit of background uh, as far as like your musical background uh, and, and how you came to be here. Just a little, just a little bit. Give him a taste. Just a little taste. Because if you don't know this, uh, there is a featurette coming out that we have filmed, uh, Jeff and I, we have filmed and I am editing currently yeah. uh, that will be coming out soon. And uh, that's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be all about his little background. So just give him a little, just a little taste. Of I'm Jeff. excited about that video. I appreciate all it's your be hard work on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm actually from. I was born in 19. No. Uh, yeah. Okay, don't, not that far back. Yeah, let's okay. Just, um, yep. So I come from Wisconsin originally. I, I got a degree in music composition ever since I was a kid. I love music. Um, I learned playing piano. I learned trombone. I learned drums, guitar. I was in rock bands. Just kind of made my way through a bunch of different musical experiences um, as a kid and then into high school I started to really get into the idea of writing music and I learned theory and started learning all the compositional rules and things like that and then I studied in college and I knew from about middle school that I wanted to write music for film um, and I didn't really know how to go about that living in Wisconsin so after I graduated from college moved out to LA and lived in Los Angeles for about a year before I drifted uh, south of Orange County. And um, just started coming out here where they make movies and TV shows and all kinds of video game companies are out here as well. And um, just wanted to be around people that were doing things that I wanted to do and kind of work my way up. Awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, so um, another interesting thing, we, we'll, we'll talk about this and then we'll get into some questions because there's a lot for you. But. Uh, we recorded at a really cool place. Yeah. Uh, for Wildstar, where where was that? So, this is a this Wildstar experience actually has been a dream come true. I've said it many times, but it really is true um, because I never thought it you know we'd get to have these kind of experiences. But we got to record with live orchestra 
in two of like the most amazing recording facilities on the planet, Sony Studios um, up in Los Angeles and Warner Brothers, the Eastwood scoring stage at Warner Brothers in Burbank. And um, that's where they record all the film music uh, that you hear, you know, um, in the great films of our time and in times past. I remember for me, the first time we recorded at Warner Brothers, because Back to the Future, I've talked about this before too, but Back to the Future was such a big influence on me as a kid and to know that that score was recorded at the Eastwood scoring stage at Warner Brothers and then I got to step foot and take in that room and take the podium and conduct in the same space you know that uh, Back to the Future was recorded it's just awesome so to, to record and be in these legendary facilities um, where so much of the music that I kind of idolized as a, as a kid growing up and, and admire to this day um, that was a big deal man it was it was emotional so uh, yeah. I, I it's been a blast. This whole Wild Star journey has been a blast. That's incredible, man. I didn't. I actually didn't know that it was the same studio that you did that in. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, a lot of, like I said, a lot of film scores have been recorded in those in those two rooms. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just a lot of history. You go in Sony Studios, and they have the Enterprise, a little model of the um, Enterprise from Star Trek, hanging up there, and they got all the shirts from the Pixar movies because they're all recorded there. And just such great history in these rooms. Um, and so it was, it was really meaningful for me to be able to do that and get in those rooms and have my music played in the, kind of that hollowed ground. It's, it was awesome. We've actually got some behind the scene footage of, of that entire orchestra session uh, in the video that's going to be coming out. It's, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool to see you up there waving your wand around. What do I do? Is that you yeah. a ninja? No, it was like, it was like he was a wizard. Yeah, like, yeah I know. It's, it's, like this. It's pretty close. I don't know. It was, you know? Leviosa. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's a, uh, it, it was a lot of fun, you know, to be able to go through the process. So, so let's get to some questions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. This oh. is from uh, this is in leap. This is Joker. Uh, what is one of the most surprising samples you have used to make music in Wildstar? Ooh. One of the most surprising samples. Well, um, in Algarok, you hear a lot of um, me taking my acoustic guitar in my office and I uh, bowed it with a cello. And that's not like super original, it's done quite a bit, but I had never done it before, and so I was able to take some of those samples of bowing with the cello and really scraping it with some different objects. I used a scissors on an electric guitar and was scraping um, across the scissors for some of the Osen stuff. can't be good for your instruments. Well, actually, they're not. I borrowed them. I borrowed them from my friends, so they're not really oh. my instruments. <laughs> so, <laughs> and my friends' guitars. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it worked out. Did, well, they, did they know that you did it? They're like, well, the well, guitar if they're watching, seems a little bit messed up here, Kurt Nacker. What happened? If and they're then watching, they're like, they know now. Just yeah. like run. There's, there's rocks that. in this guitar. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Hey, it's make music though any way you can. Yeah. So that was that was really fun to do to, to um, kind of take and detune some guitars and scrape them with things and bow them with the cello bow and and do some things um, that way. Um, so that's probably one of the most interesting things I've done. Um, there's a lot of samples from like a synth standpoint. I use a great synth program called mm -hmm. Omnisphere. And there's like some dubstepy kind of sounds that I never ever thought I'd ever use. And they come in pretty handy now and again. Yeah. So. Awesome. This one is from Azuron. Uh, one of the most interesting things I read in, in interviews with Jeff was that he was actually inspired by pop artists like Kesha. Uh, how so? I don't. I have no idea. Uh, we had many a discussion yeah. of my opinion of Kesha, which is you, you know, love hey, Kesha. Hey. I loathe Kesha. Look, here's the no, thing. No, you meant love. Um, I'm all metal. You know I, know, I'm, I know. I'm punk rock. You're I'm not, metal. Okay, I'm, I like uh, I like stuff with you know talent. And uh, Kesha has thing, talent. Uh, uh, she's so, talent. Hey, she dropped the dollar sign, so she's now a legitimate artist. It's, she's less legitimate. So Jeff's a fan, is what he's saying. Now, and so, yeah, I, I like Kesha. Do you like Kesha? To some extent, I actually hated her. I hated her in the beginning, and now actually, I really, I really like her. I don't know if I like her as an artist, but um, she works a lot with a producer named Dr. Luke, who has done a lot of kind of that bubblegum pop kind of stuff with Kesha, Katy Perry, Britney Spears. And the, what that guy does with synths and drums and, and the way I saw a talk with him and just how he produces songs, how he comes up with the sounds, um, it's just really inspiring. So I think it's a lot of just the ear candy that um, I'm hearing in those songs that I really like. It's catchy, it's mindless, and it's, um, it's just kind of fun. And yeah. so, uh, you know, when I was in college, I kind of got picked on a little bit because I was like listening to Bach and Beethoven, but like Prince and Pearl Jam, and I was kind of like 
crossing both realms a little bit with classical and pop and rock and I kind of love a little bit of everything. But to, the, to answer the question, um, I think the thing that I take away most from pop music is, and put into like the Wildstar score, is the um, kind of the catchiness. Um, I want themes that are um, emotionally moving and catchy, and also they take a little bit of a, uh, on a little bit of a formula, mm -hmm. right? So in pop music, you have kind of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and and I think that works to stick in your memory, but just because of the way those building bricks in a song are stacked on top of each other. And if you listen to some of the themes, if in a zone theme, you might hear the theme and then something else, and then the theme and then something else. And so within the zone theme, it's kind of like stacked almost like a pop song at times. And I've kind of taken that formula and adapted it um, when it suits the situation. And your stuff does get stuck in everybody's head of the office. That's it really does, sure. yeah. yeah. I, mean, I appreciate we, that. We've, we've sang it a couple times here just yeah. before. We start live streaming because we're just goofing around here. Well, minutes before we can't, I can't fault you for that. Yeah. I do appreciate it. It's um, I really do believe in melodies. Uh, I believe in thematic writing. Um, I know that a lot of MMOs or a lot of video games, if they know you're going to spend a lot of time in places, mm -hmm. they want to just be very wallpaper and very background, and they don't want to be intrusive. And we kind of did the opposite. When you walk into a zone, you get hit with a very thematic, cinematic zone theme, and then we get to some ambience, um, ambient music, but. We really wanted to make a statement for each zone that was as unique as the art and the content in each of those zones. And so um, I didn't want to apologize for having music in there. I wanted to make a big, a nice big statement with the music. Yeah. I like that. So this is from Jazzy Chua. When are we going to Jazzy. be able to purchase the amazing Wild Star music? We were talking about this before because we knew this would come up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hashtag Jeff's biggest fan. Hashtag oh. Yeah, don't, don't you lose the hashtag. Yeah, sorry, Thanks, Jazzy, Jazzy Chua. Yeah. Um, yeah, I answer this question almost on a daily basis in one <laughs> social media or another. Um, so the soundtrack is something that we're all passionate about and we're all um, working to make happen. So um, it's something that we have in the works and there is a lot of talks going on about the best way to get the music to you, the people who want to uh, listen to it and, and buy it. So. Um, all I know right now, because it's not me making that decision, a lot of people say, Jeff, just put it out there, you know, throw yeah. it on Spotify. Well, it's not my decision. NCSoft ultimately owns the, the copyright to the music. And so um, we're all talking, myself and Charlie, our audio director, and brand and publishing, we're all kind of talking together to, to come up with the best strategy to, to get that out there. So we are talking about it, but I don't have any new updates on it. Okay. Yeah. So this I'm going to make my own. I'm going to rip it from your computer. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's what... You're going to do it. I'm just going to over it, though. Yeah, I'm going to start pirating copies. Right. right. You know, that's a responsible thing idea. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, little, little side catch. No so this deal. is from uh, <laughs> Kenan Eldari. I love this question. Frost and Tony have been super pleased with your work. What's it like living up to that <laughs> expectation? Wow. Yeah, I bet you stay up at night wondering, oh, God, Frost and Tony, I can't let them down. It is difficult because you guys raise the bar so high, you know? Pretty high. There it is. All right. So, <laughs> next question. What do you think, Tony? Calic Cali chicken. Calican. I'm sorry. Uh, wh I'm sorry. What is the most unconventional instrument that you've used? Oh, this is a cool question. What is the most unconventional instrument that you've used to create uh, music for Wildstar? The most unconventional instrument? Unconventional. Didn't we just talk about this? Yeah, I was no, going to say, it's kind of similar. No, no, you uh, used a bow. No, it's a bow. Like, I mean, did you use, like, rocks? To like make a beat or something. Do like, you use rocks to make a beat? I use rocks to do a lot of things. <laughs> All right, the most unconventional instrument. I don't think I use too many unconventional instruments, mostly because um, it usually takes a certain amount of time to sort of experiment. Mm. And I know early on, when I was like bowing guitars and scraping things, uh, I had time to experiment and come up with sounds. And then the schedule just got so compressed that it was just you go to your bag of tricks and you know you have to go to things that that you know work. Mm. But the, the thing I used that I never thought I'd use as an instrument goes would be the hurdy-gurdy. And you can hear that in Aurora. What? What would you say? <laughs> what would you just call me? <laughs> the hurdy-gurdy, man. It sounds like a rude name. Is no, what it the hurdy-gurdy like. hurdy is pretty amazing. I mean... Sounds like you call me you're, Chucky. You're, 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 oh, he's a, he's a real hurdy-gurdy if you know what I mean. You're a good looking hurdy-gurdy, Tony. I don't it's, know how to take that. No, it's... So a, what, it's, what is it? It's what an it? instrument. It's basically from... Um, 
it's from a while ago. I don't know when. But it's kind of it's like a folk instrument, right? Okay. And you crank it, and there's a um, there's keys on it, and you got like a string, and it so it, it creates a drone with the string, but then you have a certain amount of keys that create almost like a pentatonic -y kind of scale. Hmm. Um, so it's a really interesting instrument. You'll hear it on some European folk music, um, and and where can they hear it in game? Uh, if you go to Auroria and you listen to the Auroria main theme, the name of the song is "The Simplicity of Home." It plays in Auroria in the farm fields area, and you can hear it um, with it's the Penny whistle and the hurdy gurdy kind of working together to make some magic. I've got a quick question before we get into yeah. your, <laughs> your your training moment. Yeah. Uh, what? How? How do you go about naming the the title of your songs? I mean, is it like is that a big process all on its own? Like that? The the what is it? The journey home? The simplicity of home. The simplicity of home. Uh, sometimes it's a big process. It took me probably days to come up with the exile main theme name mm -hmm. of that cue because the reason I do that and not everything has a name, but they probably should. But everything that goes to a, a recording process where I need real musicians or live musicians on it, um, I give it a name because I found out the first recording session we ever did was for Northern Wilds and Algarok, and I just said Northern Wilds, and then I said like Tower Transition and you know uh, Skeech Cave, and I just did like things like that. It was yeah. very functional, and then I spent so much time explaining to the musicians what the vibe of that oh, piece was. Okay. So then after that, I kind of learned my lesson. And I started to name things with more evocative titles so that the musicians, when they open up that, it's the first time, they see that music for the first time the day we record it. A lot of people think they, we practice really? at time. Yeah. We show up if, you know, at 9 a.m. to start the session. They sit down at 9 a.m. We start, hit record button. That is the first time they've ever seen that music. Wow. Yeah, isn't they, that impressive? That, that is that really that is impressive. So crazy. They knock it out of the park. The yeah. first time they play it. That video that you it's shot, flawless. that with the orchestra yeah. shot, that was the first time they were First time. Music. Now, the first time they play That's it, nuts. it sounds good because they're amazing players. Right. Then we, we, we fix a couple things. Second time, sounds amazing. Third time, take I'm it I'm not going to lie. I was, so I watch all these behind the scene footages of, of him doing the orchestra and, the, and the, everyone playing. And I noticed in one shot there was like a girl who messed up like three times. Yeah. I could just tell she yeah. wasn't doing the same thing as the other people. And I was like, listen, this girl needs to pull it together. Okay? What is she doing? <laughs> she already messed up two of my man Jeff K's takes. All right? Call you Jeff K now. That's cool. You're I'm done. I like that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. look, we're going to get into the next question. All right. This is from Shadow Blades. <clears throat> Here we go. When will we see more music options for housing, Jeff? <laughs> you, Shadow Blades. I'm immensely curious. He is so pissed. It, sound, it sounds like he's upset. Yeah. Well, I, he always sounds that way. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what I, what I did deserve uh, uh, such, a, such a ruthless question. He's posting. happy. He's happy. What are you going to do about the housing music? Um, it's coming, right? We are, didn't we hear it have this? Not you and I, but I think everyone kind of knows it's coming. Yeah, I think you were the one that spoke. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'm the one Twitter, that made yeah. the mistake. Mm -hmm. I thought it was public knowledge. Apparently someone had just... Yeah, I yeah don't know. no, no, it's fine. No, Good so game. it's Good coming um, soon, uh, where you will have the. Didn't Cougar just say we shouldn't say soon? Yeah, he did, but you said it with emphasis. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're like soon, soon, <laughs> soon. Because I'm not, I'm not sure when it's happening. Okay. Um, so it's in it's, the works. You're working. It on is it. happening soon. You'll have the yeah. ability to. Um, I think we have playlists, or you can choose, choose a specific song, and so much more control over what you hear in housing. Now we have those biomes still that you can do in your, you can make the little biome plug and hear the music of a specific zone uh -huh. on your housing plot, but um, within your house, we're working on getting some more music. You guys should be happy soon. There it is. That's sick. All right, this is from Tadamichi. Uh, what is your favorite band? Uh, your favorite classical composer Film composer, game composer? Wow. Yeah, it, 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 it escalated. escalated. It, it, it did escalate escalate. quickly. They, he, Tadamichi snuck in uh, freaking four. One, two, three. questions Nin in one. Well, well done, questions. Tadamichi. You Thank beat you. it. Thank you. You beat the game. Yeah. So uh, you got you to answer them all. Okay, let's go quick, though. Take them in order. Favorite, Favorite band. band. Uh, <laughs> this is tough. You have to understand this is tough. Two, My wife just texted me and one. called me a Kesha. Ah, Kesha. <laughs> What's your favorite? What's your favorite classical composer? It's not Kesha. Um, favorite classical composer. I'm gonna go Bach. Good man. All right. Okay. Film composer. Uh, also tough, but I have to go Alan Silvestri. Of course. Okay. And then game. Composer. Game composer. Oh. 
Say Jeff Kurtnacker. That's a good question. Oh, Jeff oh, Kurtnacker. Okay, uh, yeah. I didn't, uh, no. I don't know that guy. Answer that. Uh, Jeff hates everyone. Yeah. That's... No, no, no. Here's the thing is, um, this has come out before. I, I don't really play enough video games to probably have the wide spectrum of uh, experience to other mm. game composers. Mm. Um, so. So you hate everyone. No, I, lo I love everyone. That's what I'm saying. And it was very tough to just pinpoint one person. So, okay, moving on. Yep, sorry about Next that. Next question, super important. Do Tony and Frost have the same glasses? Let's switch glasses real quick. And uh, so they can actually, see. I th it's very close. The color is different on mine. Oh, but, yeah, but I, I got think that. The model I got that the tortoise. Same. I got also, that tortoise. Also, your eyes are quite weak. Oh, my God! No, your eyes are weak. No! Yeah, oh, my God! Things. You can see into the future with those. Oh, my so. God. It's like an Oculus Rift, but way more amazing. Oh, dude. Dude, the mega servers went well. They, they went off without a hitch. He's, he's looking into the future right now. He's I'm going to puke. Look, my arms look so far away. I look like I'm standing on a ladder and looking down at my arms. If you wanted to know what it's like to take acid, <laughs> put my glasses on. Oh. Uh, you guys, I'm not kidding. You're going to hurt yourself. Okay, all right. Oh, let's, okay, let's, yeah, yeah, Point yeah. made. No, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Jeez. I have uh, terrible eyes. That right? man you is win. blind as a bat. Oh. Blind as a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> Let's take it. I don't know how to. Okay, next question. Dude, wow, I can't even read now. Mo, uh, <laughs> Moki. Oh, Moki Kimoki. Hmm. What would be a maximum number of banjos per song? And can we have a new zone with an only banjo BG music? I love the banjo. banjos. Hardcore. Hardcore. I love the banjo. Um, I think we only have one or two banjos in, at one time. But the great thing is um, we have a fantastic guitar player who um, comes and overdubs all the live guitars. And he's done cigar box guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, banjo, uh, baritone guitar. He's done a ton of stuff. And so we get great guitar sounds from that guy and uh, Mike Wallace. He's the best. Awesome. So this one is uh, far on. Any advice for someone who's a music fanatic and may end up majoring in music with the hopes of composing for video games, movies, and all that? Um, There's a lot up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are jamming. Just hypothetically. Serious question there. Let's yeah. say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was once in that exact same situation. Um, and I would say, uh, ready? Do we have like some Coldplay we can queue up right now where I get to my, <laughs> my serious? Point. This is what I would say, right? Coldplay. Who is this? Ferron? Yeah. You and me, right? right here. Just you two. Um, okay, here's what I would say is there's so many... You can stop now, actually. Okay. That's not oh, actually... Wow, helpful. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Kurtnacker just told me to shut my mouth um, put it on my own show. No, no, no. No, it's fine. That's your show. Yeah, yeah it's fine. It, oh, God. Now you're upset, too? Okay. I'm no, never I'm never invited back. Uh, I would say this, that it's important to find your own voice. And... Um, I would say the same thing whether a person wanted to be a comedian or an actor or a painter or any sort of artistic expression. Um, you have to learn the language, right? So this is, music is a language and I've devoted my life to learning that language and then expressing it through my personality and my filter. So you have a personality and a filter and when you learn that language of music, when you use that language it's going to be inherently unique to you because of the way you're using it because you're you. <laughs> um, the biggest mistake I think a lot of people make is they want to sound like Hans Zimmer or John Williams or you know fill in the blank. And we already have Hans Zimmer and John Williams and fill in the blank. So we need you. We need you guys and your artistic expressions in this world. So um, my biggest advice would be to find your own expression and what really gets you excited. There were so many times I was working on a piece of music for Wildstar where um, I was trying to fit it into a box of something that I thought it should sound like, you know, something from Hans Zimmer or you know, Danny Elfman or something. And I found it just wasn't working until I stripped all that away and just tried to make my own, you know, uh, my own version of that kind of music rather than trying to make it sound like something it's not. Because I'm not Danny Elfman, I'm not Hans Zimmer. So just be yourself, but learn the language of music as best you can and, uh, and you'll be great. Ah, you're so... Powerful with your words. Oh, it's inspiring. No, it really was. There are people who are like, you have, you're a beautiful soul. You, you're a beautiful soul. <laughs> that cannot, you see? That cannot he, be true. No, he doesn't believe me when I say things. He thinks I'm being sarcastic, which I would never be sarcastic to you. Uh, this you is just from, be nice to me because I have This is from, I'm, I'm Mr. Bear. 
please, please don't talk about your pulled pork on this live stream. This is from I, Mr. Bear. Uh, whenever my job is making me sad, I throw on some lot music and it cheers me right Aww. up. Are there plans to make more race-specific tracks in the future? That's adorable. Well, if we get more races in the future, I guess I could. Uh, most races have their own... Um, most world groups and races have their own music. Um, all the player races have their own themes. And the Lop and the Marauders and... Um, the Ichthians. The Ichthians. The Ichthians, I love... That hasn't ever really been too much... Or talked about too much, but I love the Ichthian music. That not because badass. Not because it's something that I did, but I love it because it's two notes, but it's just this rhythm and it's kind of haunting and it's uh, it was just really fun to do and it's all synthesized and it was just kind of a a foreboding, ominous like you don't want these guys coming after you to experiment on your body. So that was a lot of fun. But um, there is, I know I need to do something uh, for a couple other world groups and I will get to them uh, soon. But uh, that's about all I know. Third soon of the stream. Third what? Third soon of the stream. Okay. I'm just keeping the track. Yeah, yeah, just keep, just keep, just a just keep writing it down. Yeah, just keep a little score. Hey, this is from Shugly. Thanks for the awesome music first. Aww. Smiley face, exclamation point. Ding. What was the first instrument you learned as a kid? Uh, piano. There it is. Piano. Uh, my parents forced me to take piano lessons. Hated every minute of it. Uh, this is when I was like maybe third grade. Do they rub it in your face now? No, like but... Like a piano, they just take a piano. Like literally, <laughs> rub a piano, <laughs> rub your face. I, uh... Little oh, baby grand. I, I, I kind of came out of that phase of, of hating piano because I was forced and I was playing etudes and scales and stuff. No one, no kid really enjoys playing. Yeah. But then when I discovered, like, Billy Joel music and, like, real piano-driven rock music, when yeah. I, I was were like... Were you like, I'm moving out, and like, then, <laughs> then you, were, you were good to go? Yeah, and I was... That's what Billy I, Joel reference, everybody, there you go. Uh, that's nerd. when I knew it was time. Been, so I, then yeah. I picked up all the no. sheet music, and I was ready to go. And I lo now, ever since then, I love piano. Love it. Awesome. This is from Hydro19. We're getting we through a lot of questions. I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. But I'm just saying we're doing good. We're getting through a lot of questions. Oh, we're, yeah, we're smoking what you, through. What do you mean that guy? What? Who is that guy? I don't know. It's my You're first time on the show. You're stalling right now. In fact, yeah, we're getting you, through less questions yeah. by pointing out that we are getting through. Because questions. of this little infraction, one last question. Uh, I don't think everybody needs to be punished. Because no, of this. one last question. You will suffer for his incompetence. Well, incompetence. I don't know. I just felt that's, uh, that's the first word that came to my mind in my mind. Rolodex. Hydro 19, will the new holidays feature new renditions of the Exile slash Dominion City themes? Have we talked about holidays on this program? I don't know. How often do you watch? You said you never well, missed an episode. That question you said you were a big fan. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> uh, will the new holidays feature new renditions of Exiles? So I have to say I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, listen, Maybe if you had a holiday, so. this is how I'll say this. If you had a holiday, Ish time in your life, and you were going to log into a game. Would you want to hear music that reflected that holiday? And your answer might be the same as mine. Wow. So yes. Wow. That was the worst hint of all. Time. <laughs> I'm that just. Was, wow. I, you know what? Two I, less I, questions now. Oh. Uh, Two uh, less questions. This is from Matthew Carl Earl. Do you use an orchestra? An orchestrator, excuse me. Or do you do all the part preparation and copies yourself? Um, I, two, there's two parts of that in there. Um, the orchestration is a separate process from the copyist, but I actually do it all myself. So um, there are people. We did use an orchestrator once. When we recorded at Sony with the main theme and we did Levy and Bay, another piece I really love. Um, I was really happy how that turned out. Just a little editorial comment there. And then... Um, we did the character creation music also, that that's, um, recording session. We used an orchestrator because it was a really large orchestra. Mm -hmm. We had like 88 people, and I wasn't sure how to balance it all exactly because we had such a massive brass section for the character creation theme, and then we had um, just a huge string session plus live percussion. So I needed someone who had done this more than I had to really balance out that orchestra. So that was the only time we used an orchestrator and a copyist to make the parts and everything. But all the other music, um, I orchestrated myself, and I did all um, the copy work. I made all the parts and the score, and I printed everything, and I brought it with me. It's a big, it's a big undertaking. I usually give myself about a month and a half to go through that entire process leading up to the recording session because there's a, a, a lot of work yeah, to do. Work. This is from Jack of Spades, eighty-three. 
What software do you use to record? Pro, Pro Tools, Cubasis, etc. Cubasis. Cubasis. It's just Cubasis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, do you prefer prefer analog or digital recording? Um, I don't have any analog gear, so um, I am all digital. Some of it's by choice, but some of it's just because I don't have any analog gear. But I use I use Logic, um, and I like it. It fits my mm -hmm. needs. Cool. Mm -hmm. So this is from Anrez, uh, who I saw Hi, this weekend. Anrez. Yeah, we, we saw him at the Wildstar fan Community event. Meetup, yeah. He gave me a, uh, very similar to what's back there, that uh, Psyblade. Mm -hmm. Got that through airport security. So ah. that Did was... you carry that on? Yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. It's a blade. Mm. But it's not a metal blade. It's sharp. It's, I don't think you could do damage. Okay, you poke someone's eye out with well, that. Well, I'm just saying, it went through. I, I was sweating bullets a little bit. You know what I mean? I was like, hmm, like hopefully. But, yeah. but I kept a cool face. Yeah. You know, I didn't make that Real face cool. as no. I was going through security. That would have been weird. Like, oh. The whole time. You all right, sir? Uh huh. Hmm. Huh? That was fine. I made it through. Anyway, Anres, thanks for that. So, rumor is Jeff oh, wow. also did some sound effects for Wildstar. What ones are still in the game from his efforts? Yeah, I was actually a sound designer before as a lead composer here. Actually, I'm the only composer, so I don't know why it's lead composer, but. Just, you hey, know, just go with it, bro. Nobody, just, no nobody needs knew, to know no that. No one ever knew that. Nobody needs He's to know that. He's our lead composer. He leads yeah, the I lead, team of there's a, We have a whole team of people. I, I, so I was a sound designer first, um, and I did the tower um, in Northern Wilds that you hear. Um, I did some, I don't know, some ambiences now and again mm -hmm. um, for earlier zones. Pitter patter. Of feet, maybe? Yeah, some creature stuff. Um, I did some creature uh, you know, sounds and uh, just random stuff. Some of it, I did this whole pass of Protostar, like machinery and stuff, mm -hmm. where I just used my mouth and I was like, I, I just looped, I did like Bobby McFerrin style. And I thought it was just such a cool, kind of wonky, quirky way for their machinery to operate because it stretches and bends. That's all gone. Uh, that's kind of sad. But wow, that's rough, man. It didn't, didn't, it didn't work out. Hey, we got another question from QMG Saint. Another one that we were hanging out with uh, at PAX. QMG Saint. Oh, you guys went to PAX? Let me tell you also oh, before we get into this. He, got in, so he kept bitter. Get, he, so bitter. He's so bitter. I was, <laughs> I was sitting down with his task. So, you know, this is what you do normally as a producer. You go like, hey, these are the expectations for the week. We'll right. track these on a daily basis. Make sure everything's okay. Does this look okay to you? Is, are these time estimates fine? And he's like, oh, no, things are going to be fine because I'm not going to PAX. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was just letting you know. God, did he get that close to you? Yeah, dude. No, I yeah. just was letting you know that I, that I can get everything done so last week bitter. because, because I, you got to, you I, don't have I to wasn't. Go to yeah, I didn't have the burden of yeah. going yeah. back. Yeah, this is rough. You're I, really upset with that. You got real lucky that you didn't have to go hang out with all of our and go to awesome. all the parties yeah. and yeah, have everything paid. Yeah, it was rough, man. Yeah. You would have been interested in. Any I'm of not. That. I'm not good with that kind of stuff anymore. Nah, so. nah, nah. Uh, this is from QMG Saint. What is your favorite genre of music, and did you get a chance to use this style in game? Oh, that's a good. I. I, I I can't say I have a favorite genre because right. I love them all. No, neither um, do I. So, um, but I did get to kind of run the gamut. I did some kind of country music. Um, I was really happy to be able to do this kind of this dusty western. Like when you go to Malgrave, there's mm -hmm. this epic adventure kind of western sound for the theme. Um, yeah, that and makes then, me want to just pack up the wagons and go west. You and know then when you get to Gravestone, what like... What wagons? What wagons are you packing up, Frost? I'm talking about my awesome wagons. Filling them up full of awesome. Taking oh. it west. Whoosh, yeah, let's get out of here. You wings. are on the west. You're on the west coast. Yeah, let's go west to friggin' Hawaii? Laguna Beach. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you can... <laughs> <laughs> get on up. That's crazy. <laughs> Stop. But then you go to... Okay, can I finish my answer? Yeah, yeah. Sure, then you sorry. go to like <laughs> the ghost town, Gravestone, and we got this real oh. ambient cigar box guitar. And it's just kind of this cool western, slinky, dusty feeling. And um, that was something I was really excited because a lot of games have epic orchestra, you know, or you know, just kind of like synthesized. Boop, 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 boop. I mean, that's kind of all over the place. But <laughs> to be able to do something different, <laughs> we, we, we can move no, on to the next. No, no, no! I was very, no, I was very happy with your sound effects right that's now. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Just no, I'm not making fun of you. I was very happy with it. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I know. It was good. You should do that again. Hey, this is from uh, Ken and Eldari. How do you keep zone music fresh? How much do you manage to avoid looping? Uh, with, I'm assuming they mean within the same zone, and as opposed to zone to zone. So, um, within the same zone, that was one of the hardest challenges I, I think I had as the composer was to come up with a system 
uh, that works within a zone. And so what I ultimately settled on was a roughly two minutes of, of, a, of a zone theme. So a two minute theme that was kind of nice and in your face and gave you the feel of the zone. And then some silence and let the ambience kind of fill in. And then we I went to um, three pieces of ambient music, about 30 seconds to a minute each. And those would just play randomly. And once we get through all three of those, some more silence, and then the zone theme again. It just kind of cycles through over and over again. So you hear, the, you hear the zone theme maybe every five to six minutes, which felt pretty good. And then you hear some ambient music to kind of keep you uh, still informed of where you are and what the flavor is. Mm -hmm. um, that took a lot of just trial and error. And um, I think we got it to where it doesn't feel overbearing or annoying. I, I think if you keep your music on, uh, it feels pretty good. Awesome, we got time for one more question. And it's so weird. Uh, that you picked this because we don't have choice of who picks the, the questions. It's just uh, CRB non back there. And uh, this is actually my best friend from high school. Uh, it's Glory Cloud. How does the music come to you? Do you mess around with different melodies or does it just hit you out of nowhere? Um, it happens kind of in both, both ways actually. Um, so a couple times, I know like the rhythm for the Dominion. Um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, that yeah. that all happened when I was walking my dog and I had to sing that rhythm into the recorder on my phone because I knew I wanted this sort of um, imposing, oppressive march. But I didn't know what kind of rhythm to do. And so that rhythm happened to me. It just kind of popped in my head when I was walking my dog. And um, so it can kind of happen spur of the moment. But a lot of times what I'll do is I'll pull up a piano patch and I'll um, have the zone open on one of my screens and kind of be walking through or I'll take some footage of the zone and um, I have all my information of what the zone should be mm. you know from the content designers and everything and um, I just start trying to find the colors you know from a chord or a little bit of a melody that starts to evoke that and then when I start to hear a little spark you know I, I kind of take it from there. So. Do you happen to still have that recording of you doing the... Uh, it might be on my phone, yeah. Oh my god, that would be amazing to listen to. Like, wh like what you started literally walking your dog and then what it ended up as. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. I'm going to listen to it after the stream. Probably so not, yeah. It's unfortunate that we didn't plan that. Man. You know, we could have, uh, maybe let's do it on the stream. Uh, it's not a big deal. We are going to go ahead and move ahead. Thank you so much for sitting here. Hey, no, I appreciate questions. it. I'm, the I'm excited. The fans got you on the stream. I know. I, I started tweeting at you because I I've know. been asking for, I don't know, months, for a long time. To if, be fair, I have too. So it, we can all blame Tony. Yeah. No, and, I uh, wanted him on the stream. No, no, I wanted him on the stream. How many had, times, Jeff? I mean, you yeah, and I no, were, we, were, we, we tried. had things we had to cover first. Yeah, no, no. no was, like, there's the, there's the the important things, and then there's like, ooh. And then there's Jeff. Right? Uh, I'm like Is down that what here. you're saying, Tony? How dare you? That's cool, though. We, we're going to move into some fan art right now. Uh, and, and I want you to stick around because there's actually one piece of fan art that uh, is, is a musical fan art oh, piece. Oh, great. I yes. love this. Check it out. Yeah, yes. Art can be seen as not only a visual medium, but an auditory medium as well. Listen, so thank you, Professor Frost. That, listen to that uh, uh, museum voice <laughs> you just had. Anytime you guys would like a tour. Do a blush. Mm. Like okay. To hey, uh, pl play play the music. Play play the, play the fan art music. I know you love playing it. Love this playing is the community music. fan art segment. Right Just gonna go ahead and play the music. Stop. Oh, just shit. Oh, please just let me listen to this. Please, please just, please just stop it. Oh God. Oh my God. Okay, okay. All right, enough with the... It's also my NPR voice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about to put me to sleep. Uh, we are... Where'd you get the Wildstar fan art theme? Oh, actually from, uh, from Todd Amici, uh, made the musical piece, and the intro image was from Adrian Marquez. Yeah, uh, that's great. The, I provided, wanted provided the title and the cover to be community created. Nice. How about that? That's great. Well oh, that's yeah. a great it's little fan art too. Uh, you were lazy and couldn't create it. <coughs> I mean, could be one Excuse of Excuse me. Uh, wow. I'm not lazy. I, I could not com uh, create that myself though, for sure. Yeah, okay, man, we've got true. some fan art. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. First piece is uh, from Shenanigan Sheep. And uh, this is a song. This is what I wanted you here for. This is a song called Toodles. It's called Toodles. Featuring Low Born Cassian. Featuring a Low Born Cassian. They don't Stop write songs about voice. us, but we lowborn do our part. They don't write songs about us. Mm. That's good we lowborn do our part. They don't write songs about us. 
We lowball and do our part. Toodles, toodles. It's hard to say no to this face. Toodles, toodles. 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 Cheers, mate. Bloody good show. Bloody good show. Bloody good good. Yeah. Mm. Toodles. <laughs> Isn't it cool? It's what? it's great. Yeah, used a little bit of little bit of audio action from the old Wild Stars and some yeah, some, some VO and uh, yeah. you know, I mean, <clears throat> sometimes stuff like that sounds simple. You know, you just throw in VO, but I mean, you have to actually cut up the voiceover. You got to find the rhythm of how the right. voiceover works with the beat. You got to make a beat. When I you mean, drop the beat, you got to drop the beat. Ooh, I could drop a beat. Don't do it. I could. I prefer if you it. didn't, but I do it. Wow. Okay, I won't. What's next? Uh, this next piece is from Metallus. Metallus. Metallus, yes. Yes. Yeah, man, that hoverboard, though. In real life. That's hoverboard. pretty cool. Yeah, super cool. I love it. Super awesome. Yeah, we've been seeing some some work in progress. Yeah, he asked. Yeah, it could also be asked. like giant goggles. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's a hoverboard. Uh, that's I'm also a hoverboard. It's a hoverboard. A hoverboard. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. It's definitely, definitely a hoverboard. Hey. This, last, uh, this next piece is from Pixoloco. He's so loco. Oh, that is man. so badass. Right? That's that great. Chua is awesome. That would be a cool tattoo. You should get that as your next tattoo. Is that what you think? Yeah, I think you should get that on your arm. You know, if you're really maybe a fan. You should get shut up, Tony. If you're really on my a fan, arm. maybe you get yeah, just point it. Maybe point maybe it out you to get, everybody. Maybe you get that on your arm. Shut up, Tony. That's you know? what's gonna. Man, that's I mean, my tattoo. I mean, if you're a real fan, you can get it on your shut arm. Shut up, Tony. This last piece is from Nina Serena. She is actually the uh, girlfriend. <laughs> The girlfriend to Mark, our uh, EU community manager, and uh, it is... Uh, Dude, it, Malvolio, look, he looks a little bit older, right? But the thing that we know about fit, him... He stays fit, clearly. He hits the gym all right. <laughs> he does. Dude has some abs. Yeah, Nina, uh, I don't know why Mark is wanting you to, to draw things like that. That is risque. Provocative. Um, hey, guess provocative. what? Uh, I just want to do this for you, Tim. I did it. T for T. I did it. I did it. You're so proud of yourself. Look, the thing is, every, the kids are all saying it in this stream. They're like, look, I want it. I want you to push the button, Frost. You know you want to push the button, Frost. I don't want to, I don't want you to push the button, Frost. I want you to, to shut your mouth, No, no, Frost. no. That's, that's you, though. But I'm saying the, the stream. The, the kids, they wanted it. The kids aren't sitting here. The kids don't have the script. Our last thing that we're going to do this week, our last uh, piece to this show. <laughs> I think it's great. I mean, you can't even wait until after the end of the moment. You couldn't wait until after the end of the moment. You had to go right now. I'm going to shove you out of this chair. I'm going to shove you out of this chair. I swear to God. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. It's time for the epic moment, moment of the, the week. week. Wow. Uh, uh, this epic moment comes to I us from, to yeah, yeah, it's fine. Katia Grand, this is called the Katia Grand Prix. Uh, this is a pretty epic housing plot uh, racetrack that they have made. And they're calling it, like I said, the Katia Grand Prix 1000. That's pretty badass. Oh, gotta, you gotta uh, get through some interesting uh, puzzles here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a jumping puzzle racetrack extravaganza. There's a lot. Yeah, There's a lot. Yeah. Oh man. So definitely check that out. Uh, once again, the title is Wildstar Katia Grand Prix uh, 1000. So check out the full video on YouTube. It's like 10 minutes long of their whole crew riding around, bad and dirty. All right, that is the end of the show. Thank you all so much for watching. What? what? Don't sing it. Don't sing it. We'll get sued. Yeah, no, no, don't do yeah, it. I didn't. Can't. I did a beat. You can't uh, sue someone over a beat. No, no you probably. Yeah, could. we found that out actually. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be singing things. You shouldn't be singing. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's that a quote. Was, no, that's a that quote. You can fault. quote me on that. That was my <laughs> fault. I was singing Disney songs. It's not good. Oh, uh, they come after you. Yeah, they whew, <laughs> for yeah. real. Ha <laughs> ha! Give me your money. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! You're off here. Yeah. You're fired. Oh boy! I'll kill you. Okay. Hey, I think we can get sued for saying that. Probably. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Once again, if you have any questions about the servers, uh, about the mega server announcement that uh, Craig made this morning, 
please go to our forums. It's full detail. All the links are there for the FAQ. Uh, Jeff, once again, hey. thank you so much for coming by. Thanks what's for your, having me. What's your Twitter, ha Twitter handle? Oh, at Jeff Kurtnacker. Can I don't know if you can see it? Is it somewhere? But yeah. it's, it's just at my name. Yeah, do that again. Do at it. Jeff Kurtnacker. There you, there you go. Yeah. All right, make it happen. I'd love to talk to you guys. I'm pretty active on Twitter. I'm a big yeah, fan. You talk with yeah. people. Yeah. yeah you I, do. I shoot, I shoot uh, straight with people. You shoot it straight. What that means? No but curve, no curve bullets for you, sir. Uh -uh. Uh, no curve curtain hacker. That's what they call me. No in, uh, curve curtain hacker. <laughs> they don't call you that at all. Nobody's ever called me. I'm gonna call you Jeffy K. Uh, thank you guys so much once again for watching. And remember, mm -hmm. next week we will have those Gamescom codes during the live stream. So tune in. It's gonna be an awesome, epic live stream. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. See you guys. Don't believe it. Planet Nexus now lies before us. We're approaching the Elden facility. Cambot 1, Cambot 2. You getting this? Our work on this planet is something greater. It is something truly divine. We shall reveal the ancient secrets of the Nexus. Never get a feeling something seriously wrong. This is not good. Not good at all. By the gods, you are beautiful. I will show you what true power